Morning. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ah, uh, early Friday morning. What do we got? Four thirty in the morning. Airplane is primed. Gotta try and crank it up. There she goes. A lot of bugs here in Florida in the morning at 5 o'clock, so we're gonna open the windows. Get all the freeloaders out of the cockpit. This will probably need to go all full dim. Alright, let's see what we got here. Oil pressure is good. Oil temperature is cold. Put some nav lights on. And got some lighting out here to see what the hell we're going and what we're doing. And let's see, 20 to 9 for lights. Get this airplane a little bit forward here. I uh, get as close as possible to the run the light transmitter. Okay, looks like we got the lights on. Windsock. Winds are calm. Warm up this engine. Lights coming off. Two clicks to the left. Back to both. One click to the left. Back to both. Carburetor heat on. Looking good. Left tank's good. Switch to the right tank. Ah, destination this morning is Ormond Beach, Florida. Gotta go pick up a mechanic. And we're gonna do a pre-buy inspection for a Cessna. Down in uh, Fort Myers, Florida. That's our mission this morning. Uh, it's about 109 nautical miles from here to there. Engine warming up nicely. Fuel is taking gas. On the right tank. Okay, lights coming on. Windows are closed. Take this bird up in the air. Flight controls checked. Alright, pretty wet grass. It was raining overnight. I uh, just keep that aircraft moving. Alright, for takeoff, trim set for takeoff. Windows are closed. Fuel's on the proper tank. Turn this point.
corner is on. It's gonna be a beautiful morning. Get to see the sunrise. Alright, we're gonna keep it rolling here. There's your runway lights. And off we go, throttle set. Stick forward. Tail's coming up. Alright, airspeed's alive. Off we go. Stay between the tree line. And lights coming off and left turn out for the power lines. Instruments, instruments, instruments. It is pitch black. Absolutely pitch black. We'll get some flight following this morning. Six hundred feet clear of any obstacle, we're gonna turn right on course. Using the Garmin 696 navigator here. Beautiful machine. Miami Center, Luscom 1797 Kilo request. Okay, 79 Kilo steps on your Miami. What was the frequency for a first? Uh, Biscayne 573, 1945. And uh, VFR calling, I stepped on you. Say again, the call sign. Yes, sir. Sorry about that. Good morning. November 1797 Kilo, we have a request. 1797 Kilo, go ahead. Yes, sir. We're currently uh, three miles to the west of the Vera Beach Airport. Destination this morning is Oscar Mike, November, Ormond Beach. We'd like to get VFR flight following, if able. 1797 Kilo Squawk 7434. And uh, what's the type aircraft? 97 Kilo is squawking 7434, and it is a Luscom. Uh, identifier is Lima 8, Lima number 8. Roger. Uh, we got some VFR flight following this morning. That'll keep us out of trouble. See some, uh, give us some warning about any IFR traffic. Heading up north. And we got up to about 3,500 feet, nice and slow. That should keep us clear of all the class Delta airspace below us at uh, 2,500. And pretty safe altitude for that route. On this beautiful morning, we're flying a Luscom, a 1946 Luscom uh, 80. Got a 85 horsepower. Got no engine. 71 inch Macaulay propeller. About 46 inch pitch. One, two, three. One, two, three.
uh, earplugs on this morning, so. 1797 Kilo, do have a target just west of uh, Treasure Vortex, uh, still showing squawking VFR. Try to reset it, 7434. Okay, uh, transponder warming up here, let's give it another shot, sir. Uh, 7434. You're at about uh, 2400 now? Uh, affirmative, 2400 feet, climbing 3500 VFR. boots this morning. Yeah, wearing sneaker on the tall grass. Not a good morning for your feet. Oh, let him dry now, flying barefoot. I usually park on the, uh, on the concrete in front of the house, but, uh, get some wild hogs over there. Digging the whole taxiway, I didn't want to flip the aircraft over, so I parked it outside. Taxiway right on the airstrip. So it's easier to depart until we get that wild hog situation under control. Uh, Niner 7 Kilo, uh, how do you read the transponder now? Uh, squawking 7434 at uh, 3400 feet now. And uh, 9 7 Kilo, how do you read it? Got the target and I got the altitude readout. Uh, transponder still might be on uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm not picking up a transponder. Maybe it's on standby. Copy that. I guess it is time for a new transponder. Get a Garmin GTX327 on this. Solid stage, keep me out of trouble. Uh, number 970 Kilo, let's try another code. Try 7441, squawk 7441, and uh, try the ID and see if I, I see that. Copy that, squawking 7441 now, and uh, ID. Okay, 3500 feet, we can level off here, throttle back. It's 2200 RPM, which is the bottom of the green arc.
nine seven kilo. Now I didn't get the eye dance and uh, still not getting anything on. Uh, I guess it's from O three. I am getting the, the altitude readout. Show you level thirty thirty six hundred. Affirmative. Uh, that's us. Uh, let me see what I can do here. Let's see what the TCAS does here. The TCAS is currently saying 7441 on the squawk and the readout is 3600. And the radar is not picking us up. And what I'm thinking is the transponder is not powerful enough to get the center. Uh, yes, sir, uh, 97 kilo. It looks like the TCAS is picking up the code and the altitude readout. Uh, what I'm thinking is uh, we're too far out of range. Uh, maybe Orlando can uh, pick me up better on the radar. Nope, I think you just needed to warm up. I got you now. Uh, show you 3,700 feet. You're about three miles southwest of Sebastian. Got it now. All right, good enough. Yeah, it just takes time to warm up. Thank you, sir. Right here. Yeah, we're currently VFR. Alright, you see, um, it's not a solid state, obviously, so it takes ridiculous 11 minutes and 9 seconds to warm up. Welcome to the old-fashioned transponder way with a tube and heating element. Bad cruise at all this morning. Cruise checklist power is set, fixture is required. Av lights are on for the night. And looks like 2200 RPM for our set power, which is about 5 gallons an hour. Oil temperature is warming up to 180, oil pressure is good. Upgrade the instruments on this. 
I just get rid of it and get one with better instruments. Probably a better. X-1980, Atlanta Force, you ready to contact? I'm going maintain 16,000. Turn left to right, one hour and resume your navigation. Better financial move. With any airplane, it's always better to get something that's already upgraded than uh, upgrade stuff yourself than you're paying through the roof. Better outside. That's the best time of the day to fly. Five twenty two in the morning. Nobody's out. On the sky. And our traffic control is pretty friendly too. And not as busy. Oh, is that a rough, rough night? Texas 1980, Cadillac Jacksonville Center, 135.45. Good morning. Twenty seventy five thanks, clear to visual approach, runway one seven right. Go 
2275, contact the tower, 124.3, good morning. Tower, 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 Tower,
We're going to ferry it over to Ormond Beach and we're going to do a full inspection like it's supposed to be done by the book. Any part that needs replacement will be replaced. Any awareness directive that wasn't complied with will be complied with. This way we can buy this aircraft legally all over the world. EPS 1326 Heavy Atlanta approach to warning, so that back to the visual touch, runway 1A right. Switch to the left tank. Currently right over Melbourne, Florida. We got about an hour flight to go. ETS 1326 Heavy, the center maintain 3000. Currently at Class Echo Airspace, raising at 3,500 feet. 
Lucas, ready 26 heavy, turn left, heading uh, 130, back to free descent. The minimum cloud clearance is 500 feet below clouds, 1,000 feet above clouds, and 2,000 feet distance from uh, horizontal. And visibility is uh, 3 miles. <coughs> Minimum instruments required for this flight. It is a night flight. All the CFR day flight, all the CFR day flight. Yeah, 26 heavy tanks, you could have original flight, showing one eight right. Plus night items. Let's start with the VFR flight instruments. Do we need an airspeed indicator? You sure bet we do. So this is our airspeed indicator. Do we need an altimeter? Of course we do. We need to know how high we are. We need to know how fast we are. Do we need a tachometer? Of course we do. How do we tell how much power we got? That's a power instrument right there, 2200 RPM. Do we need an oil temperature gauge? Yeah, of course we do. Oil pressure gauge? Yeah, of course we do. What about fuel quantity indicators? I betcha. I don't know how much fuel you have on board. A night, 45 minutes reserve. We got 54 minutes flight. Uh, looking at about 8 gallons on the right tank and about 12 gallons on the left tank. That's 20 gallons. We got 5 gallons an hour. You do the math, we got plenty of fuel. By the way, the only time you don't want to have too much gas on board is when you're on fire. Other than that, the more gas you have, the safer you are. CPS 1326 Heavy, Connect to Tower, 124.3. Good morning. What about a compass? Compass! Do we need a compass? Yeah, betcha. How can you tell your direction without a compass? Looks like we're heading north now. Which is our direction. We do need to have a compass. And going to night. We do need to have nav lights, which we have. Green on the right wing tip, red on the left wing tip. Medics 14 zero nine heavy Orlando approach. Good morning, set vectors for the visual approach. Runway one eight right. And white light on the tail. Beacon is not required. This is a 1946. Sometime in the 70s, the regulation changed and to have uh, any collision light, but before that, that wasn't really required. That will complete the minimum instrument instruments required VFR flight. A VFR flight. No, no, we'll see, it's fine. I'll just send you, you know, shortly there afterwards. As far 
is uh, takeoffs and landings at night. Regulation states that in order to take and carry a passenger on board the aircraft as a pilot in command, you need to perform three takeoffs and landings at night to a full stop. But if I haven't flown at night six months, which is not the case by the way, uh, in order to carry a passenger at night, I need to go out there solo and do three takeoffs and landings to a full stop. If it's during the daytime, and you're taking a passenger, and it is a tailwheel aircraft, which this one is, you need to do three takeoffs and landings to a full stop. Static 1409 heavy, turn 5 degrees left, descend at pilot's discretion, maintain 3,000. Other than that, aircraft needs to be airworthy, which means it will have an awareness certificate, registration, operating manual, way to balance. Has to have an annual inspection within the preceding 12 calendar months and a 100 hour inspection if it's used for hire. ELT needs to be checked within the preceding 12 calendar months. Batteries need to be replaced. And the pedostatic system needs to be checked within the preceding month, four calendar months. As far as the pilot, you need to have your pilot's license. You need to have a current medical. And identification. You got the freedom to fly. Not too bad. This would have taken about two and a half hours if I would have to drive. Up in the air for about 37 minutes and I have about 49 minutes to go. Which is an hour and 25. Gave about an hour. That's an hour you can use for a cup of coffee. Stretch out, relax, use the facilities, have a drink, have a snack, talk on the phone, on the computer. I just bullshit with a mechanic. Gotta be 175 nautical miles down. Fort Myers, which will take us about two hours and change. Now we're going back up to Ormond Beach. This is another two and a half to an hour and change. So, we got to be busy today. Hopefully we're going to be at home for dinner so the wife is not too... This is a good old airplane. be hard to let it go. But it's hard to justify three airplanes. If we 
do get another one. If we do get another one, this one's gonna have to go. bumps because of these clouds all over the place. Medic 14 is going on heavy, internationals 130 and uh, 13 miles. Medic 14 is going on heavy, clear divisional approach, runway 18 right, and you can connect to tower on 124.3. Good morning. Talk about propellers. Each propeller has its own characteristic. This particular propeller here is 71 inch in diameter. And it's got 46 inch pitch. relatively small for 71 inches. Some of these aircrafts go with a prop up to 79 inches. In a seaplane configuration, you get a much bigger prop so you get better thrust. The bigger the prop, the more disc area you have in front of the aircraft. When that prop is spinning, getting better thrust because it's a bigger disc area, it's a bigger prop, there's more airflow. Imagine a small fan blowing air for ventilation to cool you off in the summer, or a bigger fan blowing air. Obviously the bigger fan spinning at the same speed will blow more air, give you more better thrust. What do you really need? Do you need a bigger prop with better thrust or a smaller prop with less thrust? There's two sides to the story. Generally, 
Usually for crews going fast, you want to have a smaller prop with bigger pitch. At high speed, that propeller will create less drag. Less drag means more efficiency and more speed. However, if you're going slow, a bigger prop will give you more efficiency. A bigger prop with less pitch will give you better climb performance. Better takeoff performance. To a certain point. And to explain that certain point, you're looking at the tip speed of that propeller. For example, a 70 inch prop, 71 inch prop on this aircraft spinning at 2200 RPM, you take that tip, which is the edge, that little tip on the corner of the prop all the way to the end, not from the hub, all the way outward, that tip is spinning in a radius of that prop. When you're at 2200 RPM with 71 inch prop, that tip may be spinning at 350 miles an hour. If you increase your speed to 2500 RPM, that tip may be spinning at 100 miles an hour faster. If you take that prop and bring it up to about 90 inches the diameter, much bigger prop, that tip speed at 2700 RPM may be spinning at the speed of sound. Now you may ask, well, what's wrong with going in the speed of sound? Well. If that tip is spinning faster or close to the speed of sound, it's losing 80% of its efficiency. It's going so fast through the air that it's not really producing more thrust. It's actually creating more drag. So, what did we learn about propellers? Bigger is not always better, but so you really want to know how fast that prop is spinning to match the size of the prop to the RPM of the engine to the pitch of the prop to make the prop efficient for your mission, your task. This airplane doesn't do well, doesn't do bad at all with 71 inch prop and 46 inches pitch. You can get a 48 inch pitch, 50 inch pitch on this airplane. A 46 is towards the climb. 48 inches is in the middle. 50 inches is more towards the cruise side of it. Now, do we have advantages? Of 758, all on approach, good morning, set left here for the visual approach, runway 18 left. 18 left, that's Orlando International MCO, by the way. Which is just about 25 nautical miles west of us. So, Number 1797 Kilo, there's traffic at your 6 o'clock and 6 miles, same direction, same altitude, about twice your speed. 97 Kilo, uh, we're going to leave uh, 3,500, uh, descending 2,500 now. Roger. Okay, we're going to go down 1,000 feet, that traffic behind us will just overfly us. 
you know. I'm guessing it's... We're cruising at 75 knots, so, you know, something doing 150 knots is probably high performance Saratoga. Could be a beach baron. Tractable landing gear Cessna. Could be a turboprop that decided to go real slow to save gas. Okay, 2,500, looking for traffic overhead, crossing right above us. It's going to show up on the TCAS, it's just a matter of that traffic catching up with this good old slow bird, burning five gallons an hour. No complaints about five gallons an hour with these gas prices. Propellers. Now looking at the London Red Light is Victor's now currently on temperature 3006. Another good advantage of having a big propeller. Could be disadvantage too, depends on how you're looking at it. for landing and you throttle back to idle. The pilot's discretion, maintain 6,000. And that propeller has low pitch. And you're at idle coming down for landing. The slipstream, the airflow, the airspeed, The relative wind, whatever you want to call it, going through that disc, big disc, wants to windmill the prop, it wants to spin the prop. And the lower the pitch, and the faster you go, the faster it wants to spin that prop. So you're at idle, you're coming in for landing with a big propeller and low pitch. You're going to have more drag. You're going to have more drag. You're going to be able to descend faster and have a much greater, greater sink rate because of that thick propeller, because of that thick disc. Add some good flaps. And a big prop with low pitch, and you can descend basically like a helicopter. Especially if you have some headwinds. The disadvantage is when you have an engine failure with a big prop and low pitch, what happens to your glide speed? Well, let's think about it. The engine has failed. 
got no power whatsoever. You got a big disc or a big prock in front of you with lower pitch. That big propeller is creating so much drag that it really, really hurts your glide speed. Ending about a half mile off your right side. You can feather that prop if you have a feathering prop, but generally we're talking fixed pitch, so you don't really have the ability to change the pitch of the propeller. So it's going to hurt your glide speed, your glide ratio, and you got to come down faster with a thick prop and low pitch. It's a matter of preference, and every airplane has a different mission. But I'll take climb performance and takeoff performance with a big prop and low pitch every day. Altitude is life. And the better altitude you have and the faster you climb is the traffic. November 1797 Kilo, traffic in sight 2 o'clock high. Roger. Hi, Norma, you're ready to contact two miles north of Orlando Executive Airport. No landing or more information available for the Sanford Airport. Orlando, altimeter 300. And Orlando approach, uh, November 1797 Kilo. November 1797 Kilo, contact Daytona Beach Approach now on 12518. Good morning. 258, going to Daytona. Good morning. Looks like we changed controllers. Okay. They changed the shift on the Orlando approach. Thank you. You can hear the voice. And we're going to Daytona now, 25-8. Ah, good timing to get the weather. 1797 Kilo, 2500, destination on the beach. November 1797 Kilo, it's on the first on the altimeter 3006. No traffic, landing information available for on the beach. Weather's available via the ASOS. Just maintain on course, advise it in sight. Maintain on course 2500, and we'll pick up the weather when we get a little closer to 2500 now. Okay, looks like Daytona is up and running. Back to propellers. When you're flying slow with a thick propeller, you're more efficient. The bigger the prop, the slower it goes, the more torque and thrust it will produce. And look at a turboprop. Airliners. Dash 8. Dash 7. Q400. British Aerospace. Super Jetstream. Ember 120. That prop is up to a hundred and something inches in diameter. But it's really, really going slow. Anywhere between 1,200 RPM up to about 1,800 RPM. Which is very, very efficient. Take a jet, for example. Take a jet up to 17,000 feet and fly on a 200 nautical mile trip. For the same weight of the aircraft and the same horsepower. With a prop 
so you're saving half of the fuel burn because you have these propellers. These propellers are producing a lot of thrust and they're very efficient when they're turning slow. If you're going up to higher altitude, that's a different ballgame because then the air is so thinner. The efficiency is not as good as down at lower altitudes. Yet, will actually get you more efficiency up at altitude because there's less air, less drag, and you're getting better speed. I don't know about the sunrise. We'll get to see the sunrise from the fuel pump. Alright, fuel management looks good on the left, looks good on the right. Talk about torque. Piston engines. Generally get the best torque between 2100 RPM, 2400 RPM. Horsepower is a relationship of RPM. So the faster the engine spins, the more horsepower it will produce. To a certain limit. When you spin the engine way too fast, you're creating more friction. More friction means more wear and tear. To the point of engine breakdown. So when you do want to create more RPM in order to produce more horsepower, you got to know the limit of how much the engine can sustain. If that power plant is beefed up, but double the bearings, stronger crankshafts, stronger pistons, hecky rods, you can bring the RPM up. If it's weak, RPM has to stay low in order to sustain longevity on that engine. This particular one, red line, is 2500. early morning and uh, we're cruising it at about 2200 now Just 
picked up the wind and the wind is calm, so we can totally do a straight in approach. <clears throat> Let's disregard the engines right now and let's load up and approach. One seven. And then eight. We don't really have an approach. But one seven, so. Let's talk about center of gravity. How would the center of gravity affect your cruise speed and efficiency? Well, let's think about it. If your nose heavy, and the nose wants to come down, you're going to have to add a lot of back pressure on the stick. Or the yoke, depends on the aircraft you're flying. This particular one has a stick, so... I'm thinking stick, back pressure, stick. Anyway, nose is heavy, back pressure on the stick to get that nose back up. Because it's heavy. It's got forward center of gravity. Center of gravity is forward, nose heavy, back stick to get that nose back up to the horizon to maintain level flight. <laughs> As we do that, what do we do with the elevator? This is the stab, this is the elevator. Nose is heavy, elevator goes up to get the tail down, so nose come up. So nose heavy, nose coming down, elevator going up, so the tail comes down and the nose comes back up. If you have a line, which is a longitudinal line from tail of the aircraft to the nose of the aircraft. As you do that, the aircraft longitudinal line is in a higher angle in relationship to the relative wind. That 
means the aircraft is flying with a much higher pitch or the angle of incidence of the wing in relationship to the angle of it, to the uh, relative wind is in a higher angle. Instead of like that, it's like that. That's going to create a lot of induced drag and a lot of parasite drag because the way the aircraft is flying through the air. Let's flip the coin. Aft CG, we're talking forward and aft CG forward limit. We're not going beyond the limit, that's not legal, but we're going all the way to the envelope limit. If the envelope is 61 inches, we're dancing between all the way forward to all the way back. So, aft CG limit. CG limit, the tail is heavy. What do we do with the stick? It's an automatic stick forward pressure. Because L is heavy. Nose wants to come up, and we push the nose down back for level flight attitude, which is our altitude. As we do that, what do we do with the elevator? As we do that, the elevator goes down. So the tail's gonna come up, and the nose coming back down. As we do that, the longitudinal line, which is nose to tail, is lined up perfectly with the relative wind and the fuselage is going through the air much smoother with no induced drag or parasite drag as much as we have when we're nose heavy or CG. What does that do to your speed? Efficiency, drag, fuel burn. Well, you tell me, if there's less induced drag and less parasite drag, the relative wind is lined up with the uh, longitudinal axis of the aircraft. We're going faster because there's less drag. If we're cruising at 80 miles an hour, we're going to throttle back for the same cruise of 80 miles an hour. We're going to end up burning less fuel. Missing. I'm going to be power hours of operation 0700, 1900 local time. The frequency for automated weather is 118.475. Uh, Daytona, Luscombe, 1797 Kilo, uh, we got the ASOS, uh, it's going to be a straight in approach, runway 35. Daytona, 1797 Kilo, Roger, proceed as requested, no restrictions. Proceed as requested, 97 Kilo.